Hello and welcome to Rent Points, Xbox Achievements on a Budget. This week's review is of a somewhat successful game known as Singularity. The game takes place on a mysterious island known as Katorga 12, where Russian experiments involving E-99 took place during the height of the Cold War era. Sometime during 1955, a terrible catastrophe involving experiments attempted to form a singularity occurred on the island, causing the island's very existence to be covered up by the Russian government. The player controls Nate Renko, a black ops soldier who is sent to investigate bizarre radiation emissions coming from the island. The operation goes poorly when the team crashes during transport and the operation is scrapped. After regaining consciousness, Renko discovers that the island is constantly shifting between the time periods of 1955 and 2010. Renko accidentally shifts the timeline by saving a scientist who died in 1955. Renko finds the time manipulation device, otherwise known as the TMD, a device created by Dr. Viktor Barasov. Barasov, the scientist who is in charge of the Katorga 12 experiments, reveals that a man named Nikolai Dmitriev, also a scientist on Katorga 12, used the E-99 technology to conquer the world. During the quest to stop Dmitriev, the player deals with hostile Russian forces in both time periods and the mutated flora, fauna and former residents of the island, some of which have developed extreme power of their own. Developed by Raven Software and published by Activision, Singularity joins the ever-growing list of games using the Unreal 3 engine. Released on June 25, 2010 for PS3, Xbox 360 and PC, the game has found itself being judged by mixed reviews. Many people say it's boring and predictable, but review websites like IGN and GameSpot give it a pretty solid 7 or 8 out of 10. The game features a single player and online multiplayer mode, but no local multiplayer. We're also missing a co-op single player mode, but to be honest, I'm glad. I know that online or local co-op is the common trend for video games at the moment, but applying it to this game would have just felt tacked on and awkward. The game has an age rating of 18+, which seems a little high considering the content. According to the Peggy website, they gave Singularity the 18 certificate due to its graphic violence. If that's the case, then it must have only just scraped by, as I've seen more violent 16 games. The box art, like the game, is nothing original and features our protagonist shadowed out holding a machine gun in one hand and the game's gimmick in the other, the time manipulation device. True to form, Singularity has the standard 1000 GP up for grabs. These are spread over 50 achievements, 33 of which are single player and the other 17 online. We do have 9 secret achievements. But don't worry, as these are simply level completion awards, which you will get naturally by playing through the single player. Firstly, let's look at the single player achievements. If, like me, you don't play a lot of games online, or maybe you don't even have a gold account, then single player achievements are all you care about. This game's single player score comes in at 685 GP, which is just shy of my 700 GP threshold for recommending good games. The achievements we do have are split primarily into five categories kills, upgrades, action, level, and completion awards. The largest category being the kill rewards, with 15 separate achievements focused solely on killing X amount of enemies with all the different weapons. Although these give you a reason to try out all the game has to offer, having such a large chunk of those 33 achievements dedicated to just kill rewards seems a bit wasteful. The next largest categories are the update and collection achievements, with three each. The upgrade rewards simply require you to buy most or all of the available upgrades, and the collection rewards require you to hunt out items such as the chrono notes and shortboards. Oddly enough, there is no achievement for collecting the audio files which litter the game and apparently serve no other purpose than to take up space on the disc. The third largest category goes to the level completion rewards. These are as expected, one reward per level. But what wasn't expected is the lack of game completion awards. Normally games of this type have one for each difficulty, easy, medium and hard, but with Singularity you only get one for finishing it on hard. To be honest, the game wasn't much of a challenge even on the hardest setting, but still, it's an uncommon choice for a game that, so far, has done little to set it aside from the crowd. Finally we have the action achievements. These are the rewards given for performing a certain action. In this case, using the gravity gun, I mean portal gun, I mean TMD, to grab the enemy shield. There are the odd one or two rewards which stand out, such as the That Wheel achievement, which is a reference to the TV show Lost. The last rewards I want to talk about are three of the secret achievements I mentioned earlier, these being the Choice Awards. 
Pretty stupid, actually. There are three endings to the game. You save the world, you join the dark side, or you screw everyone over and take the powers for yourself. Makes little difference which you choose, all you get is a short cutscene saying what happened next. It's also very easy to get all three, as the game automatically saves right before the final choice is made. So once the cutscene finishes, all you gotta do is reload the game and make a different choice. My personal favourite is choosing to save the world, not because I wanted to do the right thing and be a hero, but because saving the world meant you had to travel back in time and shoot yourself in the head. You've created a time paradox! Yeah, that's what I thought. If you choose this option, the timeline resets and you end up back in the chopper at the beginning of the game. But this time, nothing happens. There's no explosion, there's no weird time travelling stuff, and no donkey wheel. You just return to the base and carry on your life. But here's a question. At the beginning of the game, your chopper is brought down by a blast of some kind from the Katorga coast. Who set off the blast? What was the blast? Because it's never mentioned. If killing yourself stopped the blast from happening, then why was it never shown? If your character had nothing to do with setting off the blast, then why didn't it happen again when the timeline reset? You created the time period. Ah, shut up. As always, I only had this game for seven days, and in that time, I managed to complete the single player twice and play approximately 15 online matches. Normally, with rented games, I don't go anywhere near the multiplayer modes, simply because the single player takes up all my time. But this was an exception to the rule, and therefore helped boost my total score up to a pretty good 790 GP, which puts it just above my threshold for games I'd recommend. Put simply, it's a Half-Life clone, even down to the gimmick TMD weapon. It's a simple science fiction first person shooter, with little originality and plot holes so deep you can classify them as black holes. But here at Renter Points, we don't judge a game by anything as trivial as gameplay or story. Oh no no no, our judgement is based solely on how easy those 1000 GPs are to get. And with my total coming in at just over 700, Singularity gets a thumbs up from me. But only if you play some multiplayer. Well that's it for this week ladies and gents. This was the Renter Points review for Singularity. Tune in next time for more achievements on a budget. See ya!